Hey, this is Russ. You know, a while ago, I opened up a bank account and I went into the bank to, uh, to start a new account because we were getting some funds coming in because of the YouTube channel, okay? And uh, it wasn't a whole lot, uh, but it was enough to at least open a bank account with. So uh, I went in there and, uh, and the banker said to me, she says, you're the first influencer I've ever met. That's the first time somebody called me an influencer. I thought it was funny. I says, influencer. I mean, I, I kind of think, what am I influencing? <laughs> I'm just riding my bike. But as I thought more about it, I says, well, I guess you are influencing people because, you know, as you, you ride along, I talk about the bike. I talk about the, the, the accessories that I bought for it and, and odds and ends. And next thing you know, people are buying the same bike and they're, they're buying the same accessories on the uh, affiliate links. Uh, that are in the description of the video and of course when that happens uh, you know we get a few dollars here and there as well for your purchases so I appreciate that and enough so that you know I said we should probably start a separate bank account to keep track of these things so yeah I guess uh, technically I am an influencer <laughs> it's, a, it's just an interesting word to me to be called something like that but recently I had somebody said to me how do I get a job like yours <laughs> I told him it's not a job; it's a it's an adventure. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't really see this as a as a job. I mean, sure, we we do videos. What what are we doing now? Three times a week. You're trying for Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays. You know, I might miss a day here or here or there, but um, and then during the writing season, I'm usually doing six days a week, Monday through Saturdays. I was producing videos, but. Really, all we're doing is we're riding along and I'm talking as I'm riding and, and you guys are keeping me company because of that. So I enjoy it having having you along with me and having something to, to talk about. Now, I think if I was just riding my bike, I didn't have a camera on me and now I have this 360 cameras on top of my head. <laughs> I got microphones attached to, to the visor of my helmet and everything and you know, if I didn't have all that gear on me and I was just talking while I was riding, people would probably think I'm crazy. <laughs> but uh, when they see all the stuff on me, they, they probably kind of figure, oh, this guy's recording something, right? He's making some type of video. So having the stuff with me gives me the ability to talk and it keeps me company. It really does. And you know, I've said it all the time on my videos. It really does keep me company and I appreciate you guys watching the videos. Now, not all of you watch the entire video. I know some of you maybe watch five or 10 minutes of Russ is right, and then you turn me off. Okay, that's fine, whatever works for you. But we're continuing to make long videos like that uh, during the riding season because uh, I'm still riding, you know? People have asked me, how far do you ride? I go, I don't know, on, on a given day, I could do 18 to 20 miles, <laughs> right? Now, some people wonder, you know, what, where are you riding to? I'm not riding to anywhere. As, as you see, sometimes I'm just riding to neighborhoods going up and down street. Sometimes I don't even pay attention to where I'm riding <laughs> to the point where I go, where am I? <laughs> I have no, no idea. But I figure I have a GPS on my, on my, uh, on my, uh, my phone. I can, I can find my way back. And, and I try to avoid certain streets. As you know, I, I, I don't try to take dangerous streets. I try to take streets that are like side streets. As somebody mentioned once before, he says, you know, there's nobody ever on the streets with you. Well, yeah, that's because they're, <laughs> they're residential streets. These people are working when I'm riding along, right? I don't, I don't ride during the major times of the day. I try to find times when people aren't on the streets. So now this year, it's going to be a little different. As you noticed uh, on the last video we did, I showed you the new Magicycle bike rack that was sent to me. I'm hoping to take the bikes further. Now, I can't do that every single day, unfortunately. That's my wife's car, all right? She uses it to take it to work. So I don't have access to that, that Honda CRV on a weekday. I probably will only get it during the weekend. So she'll either be with me while I'm riding somewhere, or maybe I will take it and go somewhere else without her, but it'll probably be on the weekends when I make those videos. So we won't see those things um, Monday through Friday, right? We'll see it probably on a Saturday ride or maybe a Sunday ride or something like that. And then I'll, I'll publish it, you know, when I get a chance to publish it. So we won't see it every single day. Now, let me, let me mention something too about that video. Now, many of you saw me struggling trying to get the, that first bike on the, on, the, on, the, on the rear rack and then also taking it off, okay? Because what I did is I rolled it up and then I rolled it back down. That's a lot harder to do. I think the easiest way to have done this would be to take that bike that I was going to put in the, in the 
farthest back, you know, the one closest to the car, put it on the front of the uh, of the rack, put it on the first uh, connection point. And then after you get it up there, then just simply transfer the wheels to the other rack uh, crater, the, the, the tire cradles in the back. So in other words, uh, after you have the bike up on the front, okay, um, then uh, hold the, uh, the bike and, and maybe move the front wheel to the rear rack rear part of the rack and then lift the rear wheel to the rear part of the rack okay and removing the bike i think the same thing would be easier is to remove one by one move the uh the front wheel onto the front cradle and then move the rear wheel to the front cradle okay and then you can take it down just like you normally would do it with the, with any of the bikes that are in the front of the of the rack so that i think might be an easier way to remove and to mount the bike now several of you said it looks like it's a hard thing to do it's too heavy i can't lift my bike yeah some there are some racks out there to have ramps okay where you can just uh, roll it up there but um i don't know whether that would work that much on this type of rack on another type of rack maybe so because we have those those uh, tire cradles and the difficult part for me was getting the tire over the top of that tire cradle so rolling it i don't know whether that would really do it for me either so I think the lifting is probably the best thing for this particular rack. It's just a different technique. Now, I'll show that again when we get to the point where I can get the, the car out there to, to put the bikes on and ride it again. So we're really talking in the spring <laughs> before I can show it to you again. It, it's getting to the point now, it's, it's pretty much uh, winter months here. I mean, technically, we haven't even hit winter yet. <laughs> if you're watching this video as it first came out, we're very close to it, but we haven't even hit it yet. Um, but I know a lot of parts in the UN, United States have already got snow and everything. We had our first snow, you know, several days ago. Most of it's pretty much melted off at this point, but uh, I won't be riding at this point, so I can't really show um, show the bike on the, uh, on the car again until then. I was lucky to actually do the, the review of the rear rack, uh, the, the car rack, when I did, because uh, literally the, the, the temperature just, just plummeted from that point. So... Um, yeah, if, if, if I sounded out of breath on that video, it's because I was freezing out there. <laughs> it was it was like 38, 37 degrees. I only had like a sweatshirt on. So it was really cold as I was doing it. And you can hear me really suffering <laughs> as I'm going. Plus, I'm lifting the bike. That's kind of heavy and hard to do. So, yeah, kind of hard to do. Other people commented, wow, this guy really is kind of big. <laughs> yeah, I, I told you guys I was. I wasn't hiding the fact that I was. Uh, I, I think that may have been the first time you actually got to see my whole body. <laughs> I got a kick out of it too. I, you know, I looked at it and go, well, I am kind of getting kind of big. Yeah, I got to go back on that diet. <laughs> got to lower some stuff. But yeah, I'm a big guy. And so riding the bikes is not an easy thing to do you know, for a big guy. But on an e-bike, yeah, it's not that hard. <laughs> You know, because I'll, I'll ride like 18 to 20 miles on a typical ride on a given day. I and mean, you guys don't see all that. A lot of times I'm, I'm recording and I, I can't keep track that, you know, I, I don't want it to go over an hour on a video. Because I really, I let it run the entire time as I'm talking and, and writing. But as we get closer to that hour, I just kind of sign off and it's just, okay, that's enough for the day. <laughs> right? But I usually keep going if, as long as I still have a battery on, on the bike, I usually keep going. So my typical rides would be maybe around 18 miles to 20 miles. Sometimes it's less, you know, if it's cold or something, I'll maybe do, you know, 12 or 15 miles. But 18 to 20 miles is not impossible for me. So, um, uh, oh, another question people ask is, how do you get these manufacturers to keep giving you second batteries? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good question. You know, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that they actually do give me two batteries, but... No, I make a request to them. I tell them that, you know, I'd like to I'd like to take the uh, the bike farther. You know, I don't want to just stay in the same neighborhood all the time. And in order to do that, if I had a second battery, I can I can ride further. So when I make the request, uh, many of them have sent me a second battery, okay? Now, they they have a benefit. I don't know if they recognize it or not. They don't, but I've mentioned before, you know, when we have uh bikes that have two batteries, I tend to to uh grab those bikes first before I grab a bike that has only one battery to ride because I'm limited. But if I have that second battery with me, I don't have to worry. If I want to keep going, I can keep going. So I tend to ride those bikes first. And unlike other channels that just do a review and then, you know, you never hear about that bike ever again, 
I ride the bikes that people give to me. So I'm, I'm constantly using the bikes. And of course, I'm talking about their bike and you see the bike. So it's, it's more advertising in a sense for them, too. So they get a benefit for sending that second battery to me because I'm using the product. OK, now I've pretty much kept all of the bikes that have been sent to me. I've only sold off two of the bikes so far. One of them was the me bike. Um, and the only reason I sold that bike off is not that I didn't like the bike. It's just that I couldn't ride it because the, uh, the seat was not adjustable. It's, it's one of those like moped style bikes. And so I'm kind of a tall guy and, and, uh, uh, I was too crunched up in it. I couldn't, I couldn't get a full extension to ride it. I mean, if I just wanted to, uh, throttle that entire time, um, yeah, it's a, it's a great bike to use, <laughs> but I, I, I like riding my bike like a bike as well. So um, so I sold that one off. And then the other one was the uh, KBO Breeze I sold off to a friend because he, he really liked the bike. And I says, well, he likes it. And, you know, uh, I was going to give it to my wife, but she really didn't use it that much. I think she only rode it one time and she says, eh, it's OK. But she thought she would like it. But then uh, I think it was a little too big for her, quite frankly. Uh, she, she likes the Magicycle Ocelot Pro a lot. And so that's the one she rides uh, most often now. And um, so, yeah, I let him have the KBO Breeze, but all the other bikes, I still have them. Now, it's going to come to a point, like I said, I'm going to have to sell bikes off if other bikes come in. Um, I know of another bike that's coming in eventually, and, and I, uh, I probably won't be able to, to do a whole lot with that bike until, you know, riding season comes along. But um, do I sell off another bike because of it? And I, I keep thinking, where else can I stash a, a bike? Because <laughs> I'm running out of space. I, I literally don't have a lot of room to put even one more bike in there without selling one off. So, but uh, I like the bikes that I have now and I, I really hate giving them up and because I use them for different purposes, right? So I, um, I said, well, when that one comes in, what do I do? Do I sell one off or do I stash it away somewhere else? <laughs> Eventually some of this stuff has to go, right? I can't keep it forever, so. Anyway, I just wanted to make a quick comment on uh, some of the things that have uh, you know come up and things I've been thinking about and and the like. But I do appreciate you guys watching all the time and um, and watching you know the, the the videos as as we're not really writing. I mean, I, I show you video uh, of writing stuff in the background. <laughs> that that works out. I mean, it, it kind of gives you an idea that uh, you know um, you know uh, the green from from earlier rides is interesting now i mean mo most of the places i've seen now you know at least in my area everything's all browned out <laughs> there's no leaves on the trees anymore um some people like it i i personally like the spring through fall season early fall season that's about that's the times that i like i like seeing all the green out there and um so yeah we'll we'll have an opportunity to, to ride to more places with the with the, the rack that's been given to me from Magicycle, I can go to further places now. But let me let me say real quickly, too, that uh, we won't be doing that on, on the daily rides all the time because uh, that is my wife's car. She uses it to get to work, so I don't have access to it during the weekday. So the only time we're actually going to be able to use that is probably on the weekend. So she'll either be with me, and as you know, uh, she doesn't like to be on camera, so she'll be riding behind me. <laughs> but I can still record. She doesn't stop me from recording my rides. Um, and then um, we'll try to go to different places. My, my hope is that we can use that, go, go do some things on the weekend, you know, um, when she's off of work and, and maybe see some new places that we haven't been to before. So it'll be an adventure for us just as it'll be for you as you're watching it. And um, so we'll do it on the weekends. But during the daily rides, we're probably going to be still stuck in the same general area <laughs> because, uh, you know, I'm not going to take her car because she, she enjoys riding her, driving her own car. Um, Every now and then I may ask her, can we switch cars for the day? I know she doesn't really like riding or, or driving in my car. Um, she, she likes the big SUV. She likes seeing and looking down on other cars. <laughs> my, I have a standard sedan. I have a, a Hyundai Elantra. So that's, you know, that's lower to the ground. She, she prefers being higher up. So uh, I'm not going to take that away from her. So we, we won't be using her vehicle, you know, all the time. So I, I'm sure every now and then she might let us take it for a day or something go someplace that maybe I wanted to go to and but I'm hoping that she'll come along with me on the weekends even though she's not on camera she'll be behind me and and I'll record as much as, as we can now we we liked going out to Lake Michigan right so maybe this year we might be able to do uh, down in Chicago a little bit maybe ride along the lakefront in Chicago 
So you'll get to see those type of rides uh, for the coming year, and I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully you guys are too. But keep keep with me throughout this uh, this winter months. Uh, we'll we'll do just some talks and and show you some some uh, old footage in the background. <laughs> But I appreciate you guys sticking around and, and uh, watching. So anyway, that's about it for today. Um, new videos will be coming out eventually. So uh, try Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays. If for some reason I don't happen to have a video for that day, just go to the next uh, day. It would be either on a Tuesday, Thursday, or Saturday. Okay? I'll talk to you guys next time.